Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back. It has been about two weeks since I um, posted a video and I had to take a little hiatus because we have a little life update for you. Um, I got a job. So I did, I got a job and um, I started two weeks ago. So I really had to focus and kind of take a break from the content creation and just make sure I, you know, had my feet up underneath me. I was learning all of my new skills. I was really just focused on the work and I feel like I'm getting in a groove now and I can kind of get back to what I love doing, which is this. So that is why I was MIA for the last two weeks. And if you have been keeping up with my channel, then you know that getting a job that was aligned with me was a really big goal for myself in 2023. So I am really happy to announce that not even three months into the year, I managed to make that happen. And I'm honestly really, really, really proud of myself because that felt like the biggest hurdle for me to get over and I thought it was going to take forever and I thought it was going to be this awful experience where I just like got beaten down and felt like crap about myself and honestly when I found the right company I was just like this is it this is the one like this feels like alignment in action so it was really awesome. Obviously, I'm only two weeks in, so everything's still fresh and fun and light and bright, and my opinion may change, but I really hope that it doesn't because so far, I am really, really happy with my new job. Also, on that note, little life update, my Facebook and Instagram were hacked. Y'all, I woke up on Saturday night at well, Sunday morning at 5 a.m. because my phone was ding, 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 going crazy. I had like 20 emails back to back to back and it woke me out of my sleep. I look at my phone and my email's been changed. My phone number's been changed. Two-factor authentication has been added to my account. I can't get into my Instagram. I can't get into my Facebook. They've started running ads on my Facebook. I'm just like, what, what is going on? Needless to say, I was hacked on all of my personal accounts and I spent all of Sunday uh, trying to get in touch with Facebook support, which if you have ever tried to do that or ever tried to research how to do that, then you know that it is quite literally an impossible task. So I finally did get someone on the phone and they pretty much told me that there is nothing that they can do for personal accounts. All you can do is submit the forms online and wait. And then it probably takes a couple of months. Months with an S, plural. So upsetting to say the least. I don't really care about my Facebook, but my Instagram, like that makes me sad. I've had that Instagram for so many years and so many memories are on that feed and I really do hope to get it back. But I created a second one and honestly, I'm going to look at it like a blessing that, you know, posting on my personal Instagram about this kind of work and what I'm passionate about has really been a giant hurdle for me to get over. I just feel very self-conscious about it and care way too much about what other people think. So I am choosing to look at this situation as an opportunity from the universe for me to get over my fear of posting whatever the hell I want on my personal Instagram. So yeah, I have literally a fraction of the followers and I only followed people that I really care about keeping up with their lives and uh, that I'm still like close with in my life. So. I'm gonna try and like make Instagram casual again in terms of like not caring so much about what other people think when it comes to what I post. So glass half full, silver lining, that's how we're gonna look at the situation, but it does really, really, really suck to lose your Instagram. You also just feel like kind of violated. Like how did you even get into my, and why me? I, it's not like I have some like 100,000 followers and like you're going to be able to monetize this account and it like do something for you. I just, I don't understand the concept behind it. It blows my mind that, that this can even still happen in 2023 and that Facebook pretty much just says, mm, sorry, you just got to get in line. I'm like, what? 
it, whatever. It is what it is. So yeah, I got a new job and I got hacked, you know? It is what it is. I'm really happy about the new job. That kind of sucked. I had a great week. I uh, had a really good St. Patrick's Day weekend with my friends. So that was super fun. So all good, all positive vibes over here. Onwards and upwards. And you can follow me at, at Madeline Hewitt underscore now. That is my personal page. Uh, do the work. Instagram is still up and active and live, and I'm gonna be getting active on there again now that my two week hiatus is over. Of course, you can still find me on TikTok, you can find me on YouTube, you can listen to this podcast anywhere you listen to your podcast. Be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, follow, rate, all of the things wherever and however you choose to listen to this content. I am so thankful for your support and it enables me to to reach more people with my messages and interact with you on a larger scale and continue to bring these videos and these episodes to you each and every week. So without further ado, let's get into today's episode. This week is my birthday week. I am turning 27 whole years old this week and um, my birthday is the 22nd so that would be on Wednesday tomorrow and I am so excited. I love my birthday. I honestly love getting older. I truly do think that I just keep getting better with age. Um, I, I enjoy getting older. I enjoy my birthday. I don't love like being too much of the center of attention on my birthday, but I love celebrating my birthday. I love the fact that I get to have another birthday. That is a blessing in and of itself. So today in honor of my birthday, we are going to have a little a birthday special episode where we take a little peek into the past. Okay. I think it's so easy to get caught up in where you're going and what you want out of life that you really, really forget to take a moment and smell the roses and remember the journey that's gotten you to where you are today and everything that has accumulated and happened to turn you into the person that you are today. And I can honestly say that I am so incredibly proud of myself for the way that I am entering my 27th trip around the sun because I have done so much work in the past few months. I have really done a lot of introspection and inner work and it has been tough and it has not always been the most enjoyable, but I am feeling like I am setting myself up for success in this 27th year. And it makes me so excited because if y'all had seen the way that I entered my 26th year, <laughs> Let's just say I truly set the stage for what was an absolute shit show of a year. And I'm not doing that this year. I am truly happy with the way that I am entering into year 27, the way that I feel on the inside, the way that I feel on the outside. I just, I feel good. I feel good. It's going to be a good year. It's going to be a good birthday. It's going to be a good birthday weekend. It's just, it's going to be good. So Happy birthday week to me, and I'm excited to share this episode with you. I love to reflect upon my past, especially when it comes to my birthday. I just think that it's like a natural kind of progression. Oh, it's your birthday? Like, let's think about this last year. Let's think about what my 20s have been so far. It's something that I like to do every year. So I am really excited to share it with you all and uh, give you all just kind of a little peek into my past and kind of what has made me the way that I am today. So we are going to talk about the three biggest lessons that my 20s have taught me so far. This is an exciting episode because I feel like my 20s have been so full and I have lived such a life in my 20s. I have done so many things, met so many great people, and been on one hell of a roller coaster ride. So I am excited to share with you these three lessons. Um, these three lessons are important to me. They are important lessons for me to share with you all. And it was really awesome for me to get to take a second and kind of sit with these thoughts and put them into words and really reflect on myself and what has led me to where I am 
today and the journey that I am on today. And I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of these things that have happened in my life that have led me to learn these three lessons and led me to this exact position, sitting in this chair, talking to you all. And yeah, I'm really grateful for it. It's, it's, you know, not always been butterflies and sunshine and rainbows. It's actually been quite the opposite at times, but like I said, would it be where I am today without it? So without further ado, lesson number one, self-respect, self-worth, and self-love are the epicenter of your entire life. Without these three things, happiness feels like a fleeting moment. It feels like it comes just as quick as it goes. And the reality of the situation is that I didn't know that my lack of self-respect and self-worth and self-love was the catalyst for all of the messiness that ensued in my 20s. I didn't know that my lack of self-respect and self-worth and self-love is the reason why no relationship has even come close to working. I didn't know that my lack of self-respect and self-worth and self-love was the reason why depression came back as quickly as it left. I didn't know, but now I do. And now these three things are quite literally all I am focused on in my 27th year. I really have a lot of conditioning to undo, but I truly do hope that when year 28 rolls around, I can confidently say that I practice self-respect, I have self-worth, and I show myself self-love. Lesson number two, no relationship can make whole or fix the relationship you have with yourself. Every single relationship I have been in since I was 17 years old has been trying to teach me this lesson, and I swear I have just learned it within the past few months. That is a whole nine years of life trying to teach me this lesson and me refusing to learn it. That's crazy. The reality of the situation is that I am the problem. I mean, no doubt, like <laughs> the men were not angels in these situations either. But when it comes down to it, I entered every single relationship with the same mentality. I had no self-respect. I had no self-worth. I did not practice self-love. And therefore I was looking for these men and these relationships to fill those voids. I was looking for these men and these relationships to make me whole. And without fail, every single time these relationships fell short. And how could they not? That is so much pressure to put on one person. That is so much pressure to put on one relationship. Like this person and this relationship is supposed to fix me. It's supposed to make me whole. It's supposed to make me whole. It's supposed to be my entire happiness. That is so much pressure to put on one person and so much pressure to put on one, one relationship. Of course it cracks. No one can make you whole but yourself. No relationship is more gratifying than the one that you have with yourself. When you are a whole fulfilled person on your own, whoever you allow to come into your life is just a bonus in addition to this life that you already love that you've created for yourself. So I think we collectively all need to stop listening to these cliches. We do not need to find our better half. We do not need to find the person that completes us. We need to be the person that makes us a whole and fulfilled person. The best piece of advice I have ever heard was that everything that you want in another person, you need to be that for yourself first. So you know how we always hear to make a list of all of the traits that you want in your perfect person or that you see in the person that you want to be with long term. So write down that list and everything that you want in someone else, everything that you want for someone else to do for you, the ways that you want someone else to show up for you, be that person for yourself first. That is the best advice I have ever heard when it comes to relationships. And I think that it is the best advice because if I had been, these nine years, if I had been treating myself with the same level of respect and love and adoration that I was expecting from these other people, 
Oh my God, it would have been, I would have a completely different relationship with myself and outlook on relationships as a whole. It would have completely changed the trajectory of, of my life. So I think we should all truly let that advice resonate with us in 2023. And I think we would all be really, really shocked at the series of events that were to follow and what we would attract into our lives. This brings me to lesson number three living your life for others, for their approval, for their happiness, or by their plan is going to leave you completely lost. Living in alignment with who you are, what you love, what your values are, what you're passionate about, living in alignment with yourself is the entire point of life. So when I think back on my life and I just... I would say that like within the last few months, I really started like deep diving into alignment and what it means to live in alignment and what it means to act in alignment with your values and your passion and your purpose and what you love. I've really just started to like explore this on a really, really deep level. And it made me do some serious introspection about my own life, right? So when I was a kid, I always had a purpose. My purpose was sports. It was either softball or it was riding horses. My entire life revolved around sports. And it was awesome because I had something to work for. I had goals that I was looking to achieve. I had things that I was accomplishing. It was great. And then I got a little older into my early teen and teen years in high school and middle school. And my purpose became school. My entire life revolved around my schoolwork. I have told y'all before I was a complete nerd and that's okay because it was my passion. I absolutely loved being the top of my class. I loved being the best at school. I loved having a goal that I was working towards. My entire goal in high school was to graduate top of my class, get into every school that I wanted to. So I had the pick of my choice and get my education paid for. That was my entire goal. I did not party. I did not drink. The highlight of my week every week was going to dinner on Friday nights with my parents. Like I was such a nerd. I had a very different high school experience than a lot of the people that I know, but it was awesome because it gave me that sense of, I had that sense of purpose and I had that sense of passion and I was working towards towards goals and it made me feel so accomplished. Like when I think back on my childhood and high school years, I don't feel like I missed out on anything because I felt so fulfilled in the path that my life was on. Then enter college. I no longer had that structure in my life and I really lost sight of what was next. Now, let me be real. I had one hell of a good time those four years. I would not take it back for the world. I think it was an incredible life experience and I wouldn't change any of it, but it was a wild four years and I just did not, I was not forward thinking when I was in college. I was not, I was having a really good time doing exactly what I was doing then. And I think a little bit of that had to do with the fact that I had never really had that lifestyle before where I didn't feel super structured, where I wasn't thinking 10 steps ahead. I really was just like living in the now and I had never experienced that before. And I think I took it like a little to the extreme, but like, it's okay. I'm good. I didn't like, you know, go too crazy off the tracks and like where I couldn't get back on them. It wasn't anything like that. I just, I had a really good time in college, right? Uh, but I did lose sight of my long-term goals. So then comes after college and I ended up, it led me into a career that I had no passion for. It led me into a career that felt like a dead end. It led me into a career that I stayed far too long in because I felt compelled to for other people's sake. And that's because I had no passion or purpose or goals of my own. So I was just getting swept up in what life was. I was letting life happen to me. I was not in control of my life. And that was the result of my complete lack of passion, purpose, and goals in my life at that point in time. And it led me to being very, very lost for quite a few years. 
I've spent most of my 20s, I would say, um, wandering around, kind of hoping to find my next passion or purpose in life. And I can honestly say that, like, I think I found it. What we're doing right now, I have not felt this passionate about something in years, like e like a decade. I have not felt the way that I felt when I'm doing this work with you right now, each and every week. I love what I'm doing and I have not had this for so many years and I have also not felt this grounded in so many years. So those two are a huge correlation for me. And you know, now I have to overcome the fear of finding my passion and purpose, the fear of failure, the fear of what people will think, the fear of going against the grain of what other people, you know, had envisioned for you. And I have only scratched the surface on the inner work that I am going to need to do to really overcome all of this. But I can honestly say that the feeling of alignment in your life is a level of peace that I wish for everybody. My life is nowhere near what I want it to be. My life, I am not, I have not achieved nearly what I want to achieve. I am not in the most comfortable financial situation I've ever been in. I'm not, nothing is exactly how I want it to be, but I'm telling you there's something about doing what you love and feeling aligned with what you're doing that gives you this sense of inner peace that I have been lacking for so many years. And I knew, I knew what it felt like because I had experienced it when I was younger and I had, I was aching for it so bad. And once I found it, I felt it. It was like a, like it washed over me. So living in alignment is the entire purpose of our life on earth. Find your alignment. Find your passion, find your purpose, find what lights you up inside and live in alignment with it. My 20s so far have been a roller coaster to say the least. Um, it's been one hell of a fun ride, but it has been full of the highest of highs and boy, the lowest of lows. And I think what I am most excited for in my 27th year is I am excited for a little bit of peace and steadiness. I feel more at peace and more steady in my mind and in my body than I have felt in a very, very long time. And I am really, really excited to experience life with that sense of peace and steadiness in it. I think it's time for me to, to take a break from the roller coaster. I want to go watch from the sidelines for a minute. I just want to, I want to enjoy a little peace and tranquility in life again. <laughs> Last but not least, if 27 year old Maddie could tell 20 year old Maddie one thing, what would it be? I think I would tell myself to find a hobby. And what I mean by that is to find a hobby that lights you up. Find something that is solely for you. Find something that you love enough to make a priority over the busyness of life. Find something that brings you happiness and peace and use that hobby as an anchor for when the roller coaster gets to be a little bit wild. Sport was my hobby and then school was my hobby and I loved those things enough to prioritize them over the noise of life, right? They kept me grounded. They built my self-respect. They gave me self-worth. They were an act of self-love. When the roller coaster of life would get a little crazy and I felt like I was losing control, I could always come back to those two things. I always knew that I could go back there and I could regain control of myself. I could find my sense of center again. And when I lost that, I lost myself. 
And I am so happy to say that I finally feel like I'm finding myself again in this 27th trip around the sun. I finally feel that sense of groundedness again, that sense of center again. So needless to say, I have a really good feeling about 27. I'm proud of myself for the work that I've done to be entering into 27 the way that I am. I am going to be 81 days and no alcohol on my birthday. Uh, I will have a new job on my birthday and I am continuously developing a healthier relationship with myself. That is my utmost goal for year 27. So I am super proud for the way that I am entering 27. I am super excited for what 27 is going to bring. So yeah, here's to 27. Thank you all so much for joining me on my journey. I can't wait to share this 27th year with all of you. And um, however you are consuming this content, whether it be via podcast or via, via YouTube, please be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe, follow, rate, do all of the things so I can continue to reach as many of you as possible and bring these episodes to you each and every week. Thank you so much and I will see you back next week.